Tem um charameu aqui. Uh, Henry. Uh, eu acho que o Henry tinha entrado mais cedo. Eu recebi um e-mail que acho que o Henry entrou seis e meia. Ainda bem que você voltou, Henry. Você consegue me escutar aí, Gers? Beleza. Ah, joia. Eu não sei, eu, eu fiz uma... É... Na verdade, esse webinário era para ser em inglês, porque tinha muito engenheiro da Índia, do Paquistão, que estava pedindo. Só que eu não sei se eles não confundiram os horários. Eu coloquei Brisbane Time. Aí eu não sei se eles vão calcular certinho né, o horário ali. Eu, eu vi alguns que entraram, era duas e meia da tarde hoje. É, tomara que eles, que eles não percam aí. Mas, dependendo se tiver só brasileiro, eu vou fazer o webinar em português mesmo. Hein? <risos> e vocês estão aonde? Vocês falam aqui da, da Austrália ou, ou vocês estão no Brasil? Eu estou na Austrália. Está na Austrália? É, é. Gerson. Ah, legal. Em que cidade que você está? Eu estou em Sydney. Tá em Sydney. Tá muito frio aí? Aqui tá frio, aqui em Brisbane. Tá um pouquinho. <risos> é. É. O Edmundo, Edmundo tá, tá onde, Edmundo? Não sei se você tá escutando. O Henry... O Henry acho que não... Ele entrou, mas acho que tá sem o microfone ainda. E você, qual a engenharia que você fez, Gerson? Eu sou formado em engenharia elétrica, mas trabalhava na área de microeletrônica. Ah, tá, legal. E de, de região que você é lá do Brasil, lá? Né? Eu nasci no Pará, mas estava trabalhando em Campinas, em São Paulo. Ah, legal. E tá muito tempo já aqui na Austrália, não? Eu completei dois meses agora em março. Ah, dois em meses? Março, ah. Dois anos. Dois anos. Dois anos em março. O é, que que tá achando? Sempre em Sydney? É, sempre em Sydney. É um pouco difícil achar umas recolocações aí na área, devido ao visto, que por enquanto ainda tô com visto de estudante, então agora que eu comecei a dar uma olhada de como entrar no processo de validação do diploma e possivelmente tentar dar uma entrada no Skill Visa. Entendi. Mas estão vendo ainda. É. Mas o começo é assim mesmo. É. Ah, não, tem, não tem jeito. Aqui, aqui na Austrália eu falo que aqui a gente tem que ter paciência e, e, e persistência. Exatamente. É. E Edmundo, você consegue escutar? Você está onde no Brasil, aqui na Austrália? É, eu estou escutando bem. Estou tô... Itupeva, interior de São Paulo. Ah, interior de São Paulo, Itupeva. Ah, legal. Tá meio cedo aí, hein? 7 h 15 da manhã. Obrigado por ter acordado cedo aí. <risos> o relógio teve que despertar aqui, hein? Ah, legal. Sábado, Sábado então, putz, é a vida, né? Então, eu na verdade eu programei esse, que não estava falando antes, nesse horário aí, ah. porque a maioria dos, dos que se inscreveram no webinário lá eram da Índia, sabe? Da Índia e do Paquistão. Ah. E geralmente eu faço esses webinários quando tem a audiência lá do Brasil Eu faço 10 horas da manhã aqui, que é 9 horas da noite aí no Brasil né? Ah, é. Ah, é. facilita hein? Então, aí, aí facilita bem, né? É... É. Mas eu não sei o que aconteceu com os indianos, aí, com, os, com os paquitaneses Tinha mais de 100 aí que estavam perguntando, acho que se confundiram com o horário <risos> Ah, deve ter sido, hein? É. Vamos ver, daqui a pouco aparece aí É, daqui a é. pouco aparece aí, né? É. E você, de mundo que engenharia que você é? Eu sou engenheiro mecânico Engenheiro mecânico, ah, legal e... Eu me e... formei na Federal lá do Rio Grande do Sul Ah, Alegre. tá certo, tá certo é. E pensa um dia vir aqui pra Austrália? É, eu já estive aí uma vez fiquei quatro meses aí em Sydney. Ah, tá. E... Mas a gente pensa em voltar, né? 
Entendi. Você tem que tem que ver as melhores possibilidades, né? Uhum. Uh, hi King, how are you? Yeah, I think you're muted. Can you hear me, Jerson? Yes, yes, I can now. How are you? Yeah, well, thanks. What about you, King? Good, Jerson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where where are you now? Are you in Australia? Um, I'm somewhere? in the mall. No, I'm in the Philippines, in Manila. Ah, in Manila, Philippines. Ah, yep. nice. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking the time and and to attend here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think I am because when people get to the webinar room, I get an email, and I believe that you probably entered a little bit earlier. <laughs> yeah. Because I think I saw yeah, your name yeah. in an email. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, a little bit of a mix up with the time probably. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've got uh, another couple of people from, yeah, Brazilians from Australia and, and Brazil. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, and are you, what sort of engineer are you? Yep, um, civil engineer in profession. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm also a civil engineer, yeah. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And you're planning to come to Australia one day? Yeah, I'm really planning to go there in Australia. Um, we're in Australia right now, Jason. Where are you right now? Yeah, I'm in Brisbane. Okay, Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do have relatives in Sydney. Uh, my brother lives there and also my uncle and auntie. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I can see someone here. Yeah, have you been to Australia before already or not quite? Um, not quite, not really. Uh, all right, well, at least Philippines is very, it's fairly close to Australia. Yep. Yeah. Um, right now, Jerson, I'm working as an estimator. Estimator in Western Australia, wherein I work as an offshore. Yep. And I estimate um, asphalt and curb. Uh, and, I see. Yep. Yep. And I, I have already ten months here. So you just kind of uh, graduated ten months ago, a year ago, or? Yeah. Um. About four years ago. About I have four years ago. Yeah. Two years experience right now. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Um. So do you take Jerson? Um. Do I qualify in um? like um to work there or live there well you know uh, australia is always needing for engineers uh unfortunately it's not uh, it's not like it was before when i yeah it's been 14 years that i'm here so i arrived here okay. in 2005 so mm -hmm. at that time 2005 2006 2007 8 there was really a very, a very high demand for engineers. Every sort of engineers, you know, civil engineers, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, mining engineers. Uh, but the economy is a little bit, it's not very hot. Uh, the economy is a little bit warm. It's not cold, but uh, the okay. economy is, used to be hotter, but is, it's improving a little bit. And uh, yeah, market for yeah for civil engineers, electrical engineers. For example, now uh, in my job, I work with the roads and infrastructure. We are desperately after electrical engineers. Mm -hmm. you know? um, but yeah, now there's a very large mining project to start here in Queensland, Adani. And uh, once it gets going, it will really kind of uh, increase a lot of demand for engineers, I believe. Yeah. We've got another yeah, engineer online here, Jerson. Am I uh, the same name as me? 
uh, he's in Sydney, and in Sydney, you can probably say that there's a lot of work happening. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in Sydney, you have a, a kind of demand of engineers have a, a civil or uh, electronic or electric. But uh, now they, they, they ask a little more of the experience after the, 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 the course. So if you have some of the experience, that will be better for your apply here in Sydney. Yeah. But not always. You can find some job if you have the skills. That's possible too. Yeah. In Melbourne as well, I don't believe we've got anybody from Melbourne here, but uh, I hear that in Melbourne, yeah, the market is really, really hot. hot. There's a lot of infrastructure happening there, so. Mm. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, I think we'll probably make a start. Uh, yeah, Edmundo, another engineer, Brazilian engineer from Brazil, he woke up very early there, so. We're probably going to start, and we've got uh, Ruth online, I think. Can you hear okay. us, Ruth? Yeah. yeah, all right. Where are I you from? Here. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. Are you from Brazil? Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, so we nearly have a, a indoor soccer team here from Brazil. We've got uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, four Brazilians and one Filipino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. And are you in in Brazil or in Australia, Ruth? I'm 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 in Australia in Brisbane. In Brisbane. Ah, oh, all right. Yeah, I'm also in Brisbane. Yeah, so we're fairly close to each other. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, so I'll see. I'll make a start, and then if others they arrive, uh, they can join. So I prepared uh, a little bit of a presentation. Uh, let's see if you guys can can see it. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys can can see the presentation PowerPoint? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, what's happening here? Uh, it just showed the new start screen sharing, but uh, no nothing's appear here. Still nothing. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of the internet speed, maybe. Yeah. And that's interesting because I, I got this NBN, you know, the this high speed broadband and this and that. And supposed to not really uh, be slow. It's supposed to be kind of a no. good yeah. And that's not how they sell. <laughs> that's how they sell, yeah. Uh, yeah now now it's okay. Yeah, all right. Good. Now we we can see the presentation. All right, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, thanks for the feedback. And if you want to send some questions or if you want to ask some questions, just, uh, yeah, just ask. Uh, um, well, I can see the king just, uh, just left, so I can probably speak in Portuguese. <laughs> Bem, pessoal, eu vou falar em português porque só tem brasileiro aqui. Aí, se entrar algum outro estrangeiro, daí eu, eu mudo para o inglês. Ao menos que vocês queiram aí dar treinado no inglês aí. Para mim, tanto faz. Está top no português. Não, não, pode ser português. Vamos no português que todo mundo entende. <risos> então, então, tá joia. É, deixa eu voltar. Cadê aqui? Só um pouquinho. Que tá... Eu perdi minha tela aqui. É que eu tive uma aula hoje de manhã aqui. Aí tinha um vídeo de três horas é, transferindo aqui. Agora que terminou, daí tava, eu acho que estava deixando o meu computador um pouco devagar. Hein? Uh, então, pessoal, é, 
deixa eu ver até, eu não sei se até, eu até tinha em português, mas vai em inglês mesmo. Ah, não, eu não vou, que, a pesquisa não vou fazer, que já conversei com vocês. E você, Ruth, que, é, que engenharia que você é mesmo? É Jarley, meu marido, que é engenheiro. Ah, tá, Jarley, o seu marido. O seu marido que é engenheiro. Eu sou engenheiro de produção, né? Engenheiro de engenheiro. Ah, legal. Legal, Jarley. E faz, tempo do lado que... dela. e faz tempo que vocês estão aqui em Brasília. Ah, tá. Você é a Ruth, a cabeleireira. E ah, tá. Então, a gente tem, inclusive, estava conversando com você. É, é, eu acho que foi essa semana, né? Que acho que vocês vão se mudar, né? É, estamos indo para Tasmânia. Então, ah, legal. É, a gente tem que correr aonde o visto, aonde o visto está, né? Então, e hoje em dia, é eu, hoje em dia eu não sou agente de imigração, mas eu escuto falar bastante que, que existe mais chances aí de imigração ali na Tasmânia, Adelaide, ali para aqueles lados, né? Então tá jóia. Então só para... Um mais. Oi? Quer dizer, quanto menor a cidade, mais fácil, né? Mais regional, essas coisas lá. Exatamente. Hello, hi, Bibim. Uh, we've got another somebody there. Hello, can, can you hear us? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Bibim? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, wow. Well. I'll speak in English. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, why did I create this site? You probably followed and are following my website, www.engineersinaustralia.com. So I had this idea to create this site to share valuable content and information, uh, also to assist in the journey to make a dream to come true, especially because being able to migrate to Australia Uh, if you are under the skilled pathway, uh, the first thing that you've got to do is to is to get your qualification recognized. If you don't have your qualification recognized, uh, well, it's a kind of a prerequisite for you to apply for a skilled skilled visa. And a lot of the companies today, they are actually requiring you to have uh, your qualification recognized as well. Another one is uh, this site also, uh, I've got a lot of hints for professional accomplishment in Australia. Uh, I've got a little blog where I try to, to put some articles and some interesting things about engineering here in Australia there, as well as some of the day-to-day -day of an engineer here in Australia. Uh, some of my YouTube videos, they talk about um, today's stuff here in Australia. They talk about uh, workplace health and safety, which I believe it's very, very important here in Australia. And the objective is really, really of the website is to provide a smoother road than mine. So when I arrived here, uh, I arrived here uh, 14 years ago. So in 2005, And back in 2005, didn't really have a lot of uh, information. Uh, obviously, we had internet, but wasn't really readily available. Uh, at that time, was social media was about Orkut, and didn't really have groups like we have the Engenheiros na Australia or my page, uh, Engineers in Australia there. So a little bit about me. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I graduated in Brazil in the Federal University of Paraná State in 1994. Uh, I've done my MBA uh, in the Fundação Getúlio Vargas in 2001. I'm also a chartered professional engineer here in Australia. A chartered professional engineer is a status 
that you get uh, from Engineers Australia when you demonstrate that you are uh, competent and uh, you've got enough experience as a professional engineer. It's usually called uh, stage two. So when you are recognizing your qualification, uh, that's called stage one. So when you still need to recognize your qualification, for example, for migration purposes, uh, that's the stage number one. And then when you are uh, recognized as an engineer here in Australia, if you want to become a charter professional engineer, uh, CPNG, then you've got to do your stage two process. Uh, I'm also a registered professional engineer of Queensland, uh, RPEQ, uh, especially for Jarlay. Uh, you know, you are in Queensland, but you're going to Tasmania, so you probably don't need to worry too much uh, at the moment. But if you're in Queensland and if you are an engineer, you've got to be registered uh, to legally work as an engineer if you're not really supervised by another RPQ, or if you're not really following a very prescriptive uh, process. So it's like our CREA in Brazil. If you're not really okay. registered in the CREA, uh, you are illegally exercising the profession of an engineer. So for my Shara Gerson in Sydney, I hear that in New South Wales and also in Victoria, uh, the parliament is trying to approve a bill to also have uh, registration for professional engineers uh, in those two states as well. So in a very near future, uh, professional engineers will have to be registered in those states, which is good for us because you know we are engineers and we want to protect our profession. And we want to make sure that uh, just professional engineers, they, uh, they work as engineers, so protects also the community. Uh, so those ones that are going to be registered and recognized uh, in an employment perspective, they probably going to be ahead of others uh, because companies here in Queensland, when you see uh, jobs that are advertised, you usually see that uh, they they require you to be an RPQ engineer. And for you to become an RPQ engineer, you've got to be a chartered professional engineer. So if you're not, uh, you may miss out a job opportunity because you're not registered. So in those states that they don't really have this uh, requirement, but if you are a chartered professional engineer, uh, once it becomes legislation, law, you will be ahead of others. Uh, I also done some training in Japan, planning construction, quality and productivity. I've done a post-graduation course in France in project management. Uh, here in Australia, I've done an advanced diploma in project management, a certificate for in training and assessment. When I arrived here in Australia, uh, in the beginning I was like every all the Brazilian, majority of the Brazilian was working as a cleaner, was working as a kitchen hand, I was working as, uh, what they call, a food runner, you know, and doing a lot of stuff. And Jarlay and Ruth that they're here, they, they know that we had the Eka Festival. I used to clean, you know, toilets and bars and pubs of the RNA uh, showgrounds and, uh, imagine cowboys, literally cowboys, uh, using those toilets and pubs. And so it was, <laughs> was, uh, was quite an experience and I worked uh, as a cleaner and kitchen hand and waiter for like nearly 10 months until I got um, uh, a job as a consultant to provide training in business and project management. And that's when I did this training and assessment training here in Australia, which helped me actually to, <clears throat> to write my, my CDR because a lot of the difficulties that usually engineers they have is about uh, addressing the competencies. Uh, where you write your career episodes and then you've got to match with the competencies. 
and we usually struggle, have difficulties in matching those competencies. Because we are engineers, we're not trainers, we don't understand about assessment, we don't understand about uh, competencies. So when I did this training, uh, then I understood, all right, this is how I demonstrate competencies. And it helped me a lot in my uh, CDR or recognition process. Uh, I also done some workplace health and safety training, uh, as you probably can appreciate here in Australia. Workplace health and safety, uh, segurança do trabalho is very, very strict. And uh, as an engineer, you probably need to do some sort of a training in this area, so you don't get in trouble when you work as an engineer. Uh, I'm also part of uh, interview panels when new engineers, they want to become CPH. Uh, usually the engineers of Australia, they've got a national assessor and they also invite another two engineers to be part of the panel. So you're kind of uh, scrutinized by your industry peers. And I've done heaps of uh, lots of uh, interviews for engineers that they wanted to become CPH. And that was one of the reasons why I also started this initiative to help engineers, because a lot of the engineers, they didn't have a clue about uh, assessment. And when they were trying to become CPH, to become RPQ, they were not just good enough because they, they didn't have an idea, didn't have a clue about how to behave in interviews, what to write in their uh, engineering episodes and this and that, etc. And I got my qualification recognized in 2006, although I arrived here in 2005, but uh, it took me nearly six months to write my career episodes and have everything ready to submit my application. Uh, because as I mentioned before, uh, it was really difficult to write career episodes and matching with the competencies. And every time I was not happy with the result because I couldn't really match the competencies and I wasn't sure that my report was going to be approved. So I asked a few uh, engineers to review and this and that and etc. I was talking with Engineers Australia and there was always some feedback that it wasn't good enough and this and that etc. So it took me six months. But I had that time. Uh, I didn't really need desperately uh, my recognition, but uh, there's a lot of people that uh, they, they, they rang me and they spoke to me that they really, really need to recognize their qualification very quickly because of migration purposes. Uh, some of the legislation may change. So as soon as they, they can apply and submit is, is good. Uh, and that is this last document uh, here that's popping up. This is the model of the so expected letter from Engineers Australia that they tell you that uh, uh, your, the content of your course and your title has been recognized uh, as a professional engineer in that particular category. And then they give you a, a code that's the code that you use in your migration, in your migration process. And nowadays I work for the Queensland Department of Transport and Main Roads. Uh, it's a state government agency. Uh, however, there is a commercial business within the department and I manage the Brisbane Metropolitan Branch, which uh, I look after Brisbane, Ipswich and Redlands. Uh, building and maintaining roads and bridges and traffic signals and street lighting, uh, guardrail, line marking, tunnels, bridges, culverts, uh, all the infrastructure, state infrastructure network around the Brisbane metropolitan area. I've got about 250 staff. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a public contractor or in Portuguese, uma empreiteira pública, where uh, we've got a lot of projects and jobs to build. So that's just about me and why is it important to recognize engineering qualification here in Australia? 
Well, one, because we are engineers and just talking with uh, Jerson and probably with Jarley and Edimundo as well, and for you, Bibim, uh, we want to work as an engineer here in Australia. You know, uh, I, like you, I spent uh, yeah, a good time working in other sort of works, but you know, in the end you are an engineer and you, you'd you love to, to be work as an engineer. So by recognizing your engineering qualification, it makes your dream to come true in work as an engineer in Australia. Uh, you can also contribute to engineering profession. Uh, every time that you are building jobs and delivering projects and working for doing some voluntary works for Engineers Australia, etc., you are contributing to the engineering profession. Obviously also for personal and professional development. Uh, it's always interesting to see things happening and uh, being on site and uh, delivering jobs, etc. And also it's an opportunity to migrate to Australia. Uh, as I said before, uh, if you want to migrate to Australia, uh, it's not the only way, but uh, if you're trying a skilled migration or a state sponsor, etc., uh, you have to have your uh, qualification recognized. You get points and uh, it's a prerequisite for you to, to apply for migration. I've applied, uh, although I got a sponsorship when, uh, when I was here, but uh, I ended up applying uh, independent skilled migration. I think that today is 189, I think, 189 visa, I think. In my time was 136, uh, but was independent skilled migration. Also to begin a family transformation, uh, I think it's all about transformation. You know, we, we left our countries uh, Edmundo is still in Brazil, but um, perhaps one day he'll be here in Australia. Uh, and unfortunately, when we leave our mother country, it's not an easy thing to do because in the end we are from where we are. We love our mother country and we've got our families there. We've got our friends there. But sometimes you just kind of lose hope as much as you try to, to do the right thing and you work hard and etc. etc. But sometimes the country just doesn't really give you back. And in the interest of, uh, of having to offer better conditions to your family. In my case, I came with Flavia and my wife without our daughter. We didn't have our daughter, but now we do. She's 11 years old and I see no better place to raise my daughter uh, rather than here in Australia. Uh, I've got friends that they have kids in Brazil and the way that they raise their kids, you know, they, the kids, they got to play inside the home or inside the apartment complex. Uh, they can't go out and you cannot go out. You go to the dinner and then having dinner at night and then you're all concerned about safety and robbery and this and that. Uh, and that's how it's important. That picture is a New Year's Eve that we spent on the Gold Coast last year. And you know, you are there, yeah, a lot of people there. You don't really worry about uh, a hastão. You don't really worry about people coming and try to to kidnap your your kid or, or kind of uh, grab your wallet or your mobile phone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're just there enjoying enjoying life, which is probably what Australia uh, can offer us at its best. Uh, so thanks for subscribing to my webpage. Just a little bit. Uh, I I created this page in April in Easter. And I'm very happy we've got a lot of uh, 700 likes in my Facebook page, my website. I've got nearly 600 subscribers already. Uh, you, my YouTube channel, about 1800 views in my nearly 30 videos. Uh, I've got a WhatsApp group that is full, 256 participants. That's why I created uh, the Telegram. I'm going to deactivate the WhatsApp group because uh, it's got a limit of 256 people. 
uh, and we've got nearly I've got nearly 200 followers in Instagram so thank you very much guys for that uh, so what are the topics of this webinar well we're going to have a little overview about the step-by-step -step of the validation the CDR process uh, CDR means competency demonstration report CPD approach the continuing professional development a little bit of the career episodes and the next steps what do we need to do to start and stop with uh, procrastination so what's a step-by-step -step? Uh, well the step-by-step -step is an online uh, product that I developed because when I started this uh, website I didn't really want to kind of uh, have a product or something I just wanted to share my my experience and, and share content and videos and information etc but honestly, I got nearly 20 people ringing me, asking me to provide them consultancy services. But I said, no, sorry, but you know, I, I work full time and I don't have time to do consultancy. I've got a daughter, I've got a wife, and I've got a house that I need to look after. I don't, I don't really have time. But yeah, people are just asking, you know, Jason, yeah, can you do something else? Can you do something else to help us and this and that? I said, well, I can, I'm recording videos every week and now I've got podcasts that I record every couple of days, etc. But they say, yeah, Jason, but I need some people, they're really, really desperate and they needed something really quick. And I say, all right, uh, I'll think about it. So what I thought was, because I don't have time to do one-on-one -on -one consultancy and one-on-one -on -one consultancy is very expensive as well, costs three, four thousand, four, five thousand dollars. And I don't believe uh, people should be paying that amount of money just to, 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 to get assistance to, to put together a CDR. So I put together an online product. Uh, even this morning was the second class of the first uh, group. Uh, it's, it's a three video classes webinar style in this, in this instance. Uh, which I believe it's a very efficient process in the preparation of the CDR. Uh, does it mean it's, it's unique? No, it's probably not unique. I haven't seen something similar, but I don't believe it's unique. Is it, uh, does it mean it's the best? Maybe not, not necessarily. Uh, it's just a process that I compile 10 years of my knowledge of interviewing engineers and reviewing career episodes, as well as my own experience as trainer and assessor here in Australia. So we'll be talking a little bit more about the step-by-step -step later on. So the CDR stages, do you guys have any idea of, have you seen already, have you read the booklet? Uh, Engineers Australia has this booklet. So yeah, this booklet, uh, I strongly encourage you to download the booklet, if you want, uh, in my web page, I've got a link, a link to the booklet as well, or you can go to the Engineers Australia website and, and just look for the Migration Skills Assessment and you will find the PDF there as well. Uh, but the booklet is the booklet, it's got all the guidelines, it's got the, uh, what you need to do and what you cannot do, this and that. But if it was that easy, uh, people we really wouldn't really be struggling to put together their CDR. So a lot of people, you know, they self, uh, self-taught, they, they don't need assistance. They do, they read and reread and read 10 times and they do it. Uh, those people probably, they don't need uh, to do it quickly. They have a lot of time to, to do it. Uh, but other people, they, you know, they don't have time, they need to do quickly, or they don't really, they need some assistance. Uh, other people, a little bit dodgy, they actually do dodgy stuff. They actually hire somebody to, to do it uh, for them, which I'll be covering a little bit later on, which is uh, illegal, actually. It's a breach of the code of ethics uh, of the engineers of Australia. So the competency demonstration report, especially for us uh, Brazilians, uh, just to explain a little, I, just a step uh, back, there are five pathways to recognize your qualification here in Australia. 
and the pathways they are in the booklet as well but just explaining quickly the first pathway is when you have an Australian qualification so when you study here in Australia like an engineering degree uh, uh, that particular university or organization, uh, they are accredited by Engineers Australia. And then if you graduated in that particular organization or university, uh, your qualification is automatically recognized here in Australia. So that's a pathway number one, which is under Australian qualification. A pathway number two is if your country is signatory of the Washington Accord. Uh, Washington Accord is an agreement between countries that uh, countries and Australia and Australia and other countries that if you are for example United States if you have graduated from particular universities in the United States in some particular year uh, Engineers Australia recognizes automatically under the Washington Accord and that's for professional engineers for engineering technologists, which is uh, technologos in Portuguese, uh, that's under the Sydney Accord. Same thing, there are countries that are signatory to the uh, Sydney Accord for engineering technologists. And then if you are part of one of those countries and graduated in universities from those countries in those years there, etc., and if those Universities are accredited by Engineers Australia. Uh, you can get recognized under the Sydney Accord. And then the Dublin Accord, which is the, the fourth pathway, is for engineering associates, or in Portuguese, uh, technicus. So if you are again under those countries, the signatory to the Dublin Accord, uh, you can then be recognized as engineering associate or technical under the Dublin pathway. But for everybody else, uh, those uh, unfortunate engineers like us Brazilians uh, and many other engineers from other countries that are not signatory to those accords, we gotta go through the CDR pathway, which is under the competency demonstration report, which is basically this process here where we gotta have to gather some personal information, uh, photo ident identification, documentation, uh, change of name if you if it's the case. You gotta have your resume, and you gotta have your English test. Of this part, first step, uh, English test is usually the difficult bit. Everything else is easy to to get, but English test. There's a minimum of, uh, for example, IELTS. Uh, you've got to have a minimum score of six in each of the four bands, uh, writing, listening, reading, and uh, speaking. You also have the option to do TOEFL and PTE. the are two other different English tests, and they've got a similar or similar scoring as well. In the manual, there is the, the minimal score for each of those tests as well. Uh, remembering that uh, having six in IELTS, it's the... Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, you, yeah, fire the question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can we mix uh, two is exams like two IELTS tests, like I've done one last year and I got five and a half on the speaking band. In the other bands I got a higher than six. Then I'm looking to do another exam. And some people uh, do say we can mix the two exams and some some others say we cannot mix we have to get six in each band in just one in just one sitting <clears throat> yeah yeah that's a very good question I I, yeah yeah that's a very good question Jale. i i don't really know but uh i've got a because i 
yeah, I usually, I've got good relationship with Engineers Australia. Uh, I actually got somebody there that uh, sometimes when I have questions, I ask them questions there and she, uh, she's actually one of the assessors of the stage one as well. Uh, I'll ask her the question if we can uh, mix kind of, uh, I get what you're saying. Let's say that uh, you've got uh, more than uh, six or more in three bands in one test and then you just redo the other test yeah. and then in that test you get a little bit higher. But I think that when you do the test, you actually do yeah. the whole test again, I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. test again. But, but it's not necessary get more than six. In every single, yeah. 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 I, I haven't heard about people mixing uh, different uh, English tests to, uh, to make up the I, result. I have... I have last year, but this year uh, they say uh, they aren't allowed anymore uh, to right. mix. Yeah, because like, English tests they year. usually they usually valid for two years, so yeah. perhaps it, it can. But I'll I'll take notes. I actually yeah, that's an interesting question. It yeah. is. It, it is very interesting. Uh, I'll type the question here because yeah. then it gets recorded and I, when I review, I, I won't forget. Uh, so can we mix English test results where both have mixed results uh, few more than six and others less than six but combining both tests all bands are more than six or e uh, are equal or more than six all right Okay. Thank you. I'll uh, ask that question, Jarlai, and, and I'll let you guys know. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, English test is usually the, uh, the first barrier. Uh, what I did, because um, I wanted to kind of, uh, I wanted to get started with the CDR. So I started my CDR well before I decided to do the English test, although I kind of, uh, when I arrived here, I thought that my English was really good. But, uh, you know, the Australian English is not, uh, <laughs> is not like, uh, <laughs> is not like the normal English that we learn in Brazil. So I was quite frustrated because I studied a lot of English in Brazil and I lived in Japan and etc. Et so I thought my English was good. But when I arrived here, yeah, I couldn't really, yeah. So I took some time to get my listening and my speaking to get used to the Australian accent. Uh, I ended up going good. I got, I think it was 7.5 minimum. And I got some eights and 8.5s. Uh, but that was after a few months of kind of a listening and practicing, etc., etc. Uh, but nevertheless, when I got my IELTS test result, uh, I had pretty much my CDR ready and uh, ready to go. So as soon as I got my English test, I just uh, attached to my CDR and I sent to, to Engineers Australia. So I didn't really uh, lose time after I got the English test, because it's not mandatory that you gotta have your English test to start writing your, your CDR. Because your CDR, and I keep saying to people, you, if you're not working as an engineer here, it uh, doesn't really matter if you write in your, if you start writing your CDR now or in the future, because you're not going to add any other experience, because you're not working as an engineer. So your experience, that you'll be writing your career episodes will be pretty much the experience that you had back in your country. Uh, 
back in Brazil or back in uh, in another country. So yeah, and migration agents they 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 say when you arrive in Australia, try to recognize your qualification as soon as you can. So then the other step is uh, you got to uh, nominate your preferred occupational category. So either you nominate for a professional engineer, an engineering technologist, or an engineering associate. Uh, most of us, we apply for professional, professional engineer. Uh, there are a few that they, they apply for technologists which are the technologos and associate, which are the technicals. And I understand that now it's everything online. So when you go to my portal in the Engineers Australia website, then you've got to choose a drop down list, just a category. There's a fourth category there, which is called uh, engineering manager. Uh, but the engineering manager category is not an occupational category. So you can be assessed under engineering manager, but that just, this is just for migration purposes. So if you get recognized as engineering manager, uh, you cannot be a member of Engineers Australia. You will just get recognition to get the number of the code so you can apply for migration purposes. Uh, because engineering manager actually is from a different category. Occupational category is for managers, not an engineer. But Engineers Australia, they do assessment for migration purposes. It gets a little bit confused, but uh, if you want to become a member of the Engineers Australia, uh, and if you recognize as an engineering manager, uh, you won't be able to. And then another step is your education. You've got to prepare academic certificates, academic transcripts, or historico scholar, historico academico, and any other relevant academic documentation. If you've done uh, short courses, extension courses, post-graduation courses, or master or doctorate, PhDs, etc., or even uh, uh, extension courses like uh, specialization courses back in Brazil or other countries, uh, you've got to have your, your relevant academic documentation. And just don't forget that uh, those documents, uh, you've got to upload a color scan of the original document in its original language, as well as an English translation uh, done by an authorized translator. So the authorized translator, uh, those ones, though you guys that are here in Australia, you certainly will be using a NATI accredited translator. But for Edimundo back in Brazil, uh, you can either use uh, Tradutor Juramentado back in Brazil, or you can contact one of the NATI translators here in Australia uh, because you just need to scan the documents and send the documents and they will translate and send you a scan back. Uh, the translators or the, the translated documents, they're going to have identification of the translator, their identification number, uh, their name, their status, and their contact details as well. Uh, feedback that I get from some uh, migration companies is that uh, when they use translators that are not in Australia, uh, one, they pay a little bit more because it is expensive as well, the, the translators in other countries. But because they are not in Australia and they're not used to the terminology here in Australia, when they translate, they translate word by word. And then when it comes to Engineers Australia, it comes with a different meaning. And then usually when it happens, Engineers Australia will ask you to change the translation because it doesn't make sense. So that's why it's, I recommend you, uh, you, if you want to, you, you're not obliged to, but I certainly recommend you guys to use uh, a Nazi translator here in Australia. Uh, and then you gotta have some uh, evidences of employment. Uh, 
especially if you used in the career episodes. If you are mentioning uh, some ex work experience in your career episodes, you're gonna have your reference letter from the company. And also if you worked more than 12 months in a company, you gotta provide evidence of employment as well. And you gotta have the, the letterhead company, you gotta have the name of the company, the contact details of the company, your main functions that you uh, worked in that company, the period of employment, and it's gotta be signed off by either your supervisor or your former supervisor, or somebody from the human resources department there. Uh, it says there in the, in the booklet that Engineers Australia also, they do assessment for relevant skilled employment. Uh, for those people wanting to apply for migration, uh, I'm not quite sure because I'm not a migration agent, but uh, I hear that uh, you can get points if you can demonstrate years of experience in that particular uh, relevant skilled employment and engineers australia they also do that service you gotta pay extra but they also do that assessment and some people ask me oh jerson but i heard that uh migration department or department of home affairs etc they do this assessment uh, yes they do uh, but i heard some migration agencies saying that if engineers australia they recognize your employment your relevant skilled employment when you send that assessment to the immigration department. Uh, the immigration department is not really going to question too much about your skilled employment. If you send your skilled employment direct to the immigration department for them to assess, they might have questions because they're not quite specialized in that area there. Uh, and then you're gonna prepare a report, uh, which is usually the, the bit that is more difficult because you've got to put together your CPD uh, continuing professional development, your career episodes, uh, three career episodes, and you've got to have your summary statement. And once you get uh, your report ready and all of those other documents uh, properly translated and everything else, you just got to then upload uh, everything into your uh, login in your My Portal website, uh, My Portal in the Engineers Australia website, and just submit your CDR together with all of the documents. When you submit your documents, uh, Engineers Australia, I hear that they're taking about two months, about two months to assess and give you some feedback. Uh, when I applied, my response came back in just two weeks. So it was very, very quick. And they didn't really ask a lot of questions. But uh, in some cases, uh, I was made aware that uh, Engineers Australia, sometimes they ask questions, they ask for more documents before they make the decision. And then just for some clarification. And then you've got a you got few days to submit uh, documents. Uh, all right, I've got a question here from Bibim. Uh, I'm currently doing my master's in Australia. I completed one semester. Can I include that in my CPD? Yes, Bibim, uh, certainly, because CPD is continuing professional development. So it's every uh, study or event that you did after you graduated. So if you're doing your master's, I'm assuming that you already graduated. So uh, you can actually count your master's in, 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 in your CPD, even though you just completed one semester. Because you completed one semester, but you probably completed a uh, few subjects. So those subjects you can uh, include in your CPD. Uh, all right. And I'll be talking in more details about the CPD and the career episodes and summary statement as well. 
So CPD, uh, yeah, that's timely. So continuing professional development is very simple. It's just a list, just a one pager, just one page A4 uh, format, just like a little table, just having the title, the date, duration, and venue. So for example, uh, Last week, I did, uh, and as an engineer, a CPA, I've got to provide my CPD as well. So just an example, what could be one line of that CPD. Uh, last week, I did a training course in erosion and sediment control, uh, just for environmental management stuff. So my title would be erosion and sediment control level two. That was the title of my training. The date, I uh, forgot the date, but let's say that was uh, the 25th of June, 2019. Duration, six hours. And the venue uh, was a company called Topo. So Topo uh, Environmental Services, whatever. And that's it. Just one line, just with the title of the training, the date that you did. Uh, how many hours or how many days if you went to a conference that took three days uh, you put duration three days and the venue etc etc uh, if you've done some post-graduation course as BBM said uh, done some is doing some master degree but some of the subjects you can actually put subjects uh, as the title of the subject the date usually when you completed that subject, uh, the duration, how many hours did you spend doing that, uh, that subject and the venue, let's say University uh, of Queensland or whatever. And it's good to just uh, reinforce that uh, Engineers Australia, to, to, to be recognized as an engineer here in Australia, you actually don't need work experience. So if you're just a graduate engineer or in Portuguese, in Portuguese, recém formado, you can actually validate your qualification without having any work experience. Uh, so that's why in terms of CPD, Engineers Australia, especially for those ones that are just kind of uh, graduated just now or have six months or one year graduation, they don't really expect to see a lot of hours in terms of CPD. Other things that you can use as your CPD, for example, if you attended a conference, either as a presenter or a participant, you can actually include in there. Uh, workshops, courses, seminars, uh, discussion groups, uh, technical inspections or technical visits, you can also put uh, in your CPD. Uh, preparation and presentation of course material, conferences and symposiums. Even though if you are working, for example, in a company and then you have a meeting and you're going to explain something about your work and you're going to explain to other colleagues and other engineers and other people there and you're preparing a PowerPoint presentation about it, uh, you can actually include that time that you spent to prepare the presentation and to present the presentation as part of your CPD. A private study uh, includes uh, books, uh, technical journals, manuals, uh, technical specifications, standards. So what the engineers Australia, and that's what uh, the person in there uh, told me, was uh, what they after in this particular stage one uh, assessment. Uh, it's an assessment at a graduate level. So it's an assessment of a recent formado level. So they just want to know in terms of CPD that you have the understanding that it is important to have professional development. It is, they understand or you understand that uh, it's important for you to study, it's important for you to be reading technical material, it's important for you to pursue uh, professional development. Just excuse, I'm a bit uh, with a cold or a little bit of a hay fever, so my nose is a little bit blocked. 
what else here we've got? So that's a CPD. So next about the career episodes. So we got to write three career episodes. A career episode is an account of your engineering education or work. So you can use your experience when you are, when, when you were studying at university or and uh, your experience at work. Each career episode focuses upon a specific period or distinct aspect of your engineering activity. And each career episode must focus on a different period or aspect of your engineering activity. And each episode should focus on how you applied your engineering knowledge and skills in denominated occupation. So this word is actually coming from direct from the booklet because I don't want to make up anything. Uh, so that's uh, Ipsis literature from what is written in the, in, in, in the booklet. So important thing, career episode is something that you did that could be from your study period or it could be from your work period. So you may base your career episodes upon an engineering task undertaken as part of your educational program. So let's say that uh, when you were studying, you ended up doing uh, undergraduate project or subject or assessment in that particular subject. And you can actually use that particular assessment. Uh, for example, in Brazil it's very common, TCC, Trabalho de Conclusão de Curso, or your final assessment. Uh, a lot of people, they use the TCC that usually Brazilian engineers, they do in Brazil as part of the career episodes as well. You can also use a project you have worked on or you are currently working on. So it doesn't really need to be something that you did in the past. It could be something that you're still doing because uh, there's still a lot of things that you've done already in the current project that you're working on. A specific position that you occupied or current, currently occupy. Uh, in this case, the career episode must comprise more than a mere duty statement. So if you're saying that you are, you are uh, an estimator, uh, an estimator for the project of uh, resurfacing a road. Yeah, all right. But that's just, uh, that's just what you do, but you gotta, detail what do you do when you are estimating those sort of stuff. It could be also a particular engineering problem that you were required to solve. Uh, usually this is the focus of the career episodes. You've got to focus on a particular problem and it's got to be an engineering problem. The problem needs to be complex enough and then you've got to describe what you did uh, to resolve that, that problem. Uh, this is very important. Uh, career episodes must be based on work conducted personally by you and must be written entirely in your own words. Presenting work conducted by others as your own or using other people's words, templates, career episodes, online sources, etc., is considered plagiarism and is a violation of Engineers Australia Code of Ethics. Uh, this carries significant penalties, including the rejection of the application, imposition of a 12-month ban, and or reporting of your details to the Department of Home Affairs for further investigation and action. And this is the warning that's in the, it's in the booklet. Uh, it says the having your career episodes written by another person or persons constitutes unethical behavior and will result in serious consequences, including but not limited to immediate rejection of the application along with imposition of a 12 month ban and mandatory reporting of the applicant's details to the Department of, of Home Affairs. Uh, so we think that, uh, nah, yeah, you know, uh, there are companies that they provide CDR writing and I actually received a, a, a message and probably some of you guys already saw in my Facebook post it was actually a Brazilian engineer that contacted me saying that uh, Engineers Australia rejected his application and rejected his review as well. 
because engineers Australia found uh, pictures that he copied from the internet. So, yeah, you can't really copy anything from the internet. Engineers Australia, they use softwares, very powerful softwares to detect uh, plagiarism. And if they see that uh, you copy and paste uh, text from internet, etc., etc., or text from other people's CDR, uh, and I see a lot of people, you know, in our group there, Engenheiros in Australia, people asking for templates of, oh, can you share with me your CDR or your career episode so I have a little bit of an idea of what happened. Uh, it's really, really dangerous, very risky, because if Engineers Australia catches you, uh, you know, you got to wait 12 months and uh, even if you wait, after that, yes, certainly Engineers Australia will have a very good look at your new report. So writing the career episodes, it's not difficult. Uh, but it's not simple. So I'm not saying that's easy, but you can write by yourself. You don't need to ask anybody and you don't need to pay anybody to, to write it. It's too risky. You know, there are companies that they offer to write, you send your resume and they return you the full career episode written. Uh, and they say that uh, they, they send you a certificate anti-plagiarism. That's BS, that's bullshit. A lot of people, they get caught and uh, they get application rejected. So very risky. Yeah, I certainly don't uh, recommend and I actually suggest you not to do that. Uh, that's in terms of career episodes. And then this is the summary statement. That's the third bit of the report. So we have our CPD, we have all our professional development, the listing, a table, and then we've got the three career episodes that you gotta write. Uh, and career episodes, usually they vary between uh, 1,500 and 2,500 words each career episode. Uh, when I wrote my career episodes, I wrote with probably about 2,500 words each uh, because I wanted really to have a very solid uh, career episode. And then once you write your career episode, you gotta then fill up the summary statement. Uh, the summary statement is also in the, in the booklet. Uh, there are 16, one six, 16 competencies that we need to address. And uh, those competencies, they gotta be related, obviously, in your career episode. Uh, there are paragraphs, you gotta number the paragraphs, etc., etc. And let's say, for example, this uh, example here, uh, PE 1.1, uh, that's the competency. So in the middle column, you gotta write why, you believe you have applied that particular element. And then in the third column, uh, in this column there, you gotta actually put the paragraph number. Uh, career episode one, so 1.3 for example, which is the paragraph number three of the career episode one. And also 2.8 and 3.12, whatever. So you gotta here put all the numbers of the paragraphs that you believe you've addressed that particular competency. And this is the very difficult bit that for us engineers uh, we face because we, we're good at a lot of things. We're good at uh, calculation, we're good at uh, analysis, we're good at uh, uh, critical thinking, etc. but we're not good at uh, writing. We not, well, I at least, I am not good at writing. Uh, I had to learn a lot 
uh, to be able to write uh, good stuff. Especially when you need to add match competencies. These are your report and these are the competencies and then you gotta match all the competencies. So that's where we struggle. But uh, this, is the, this is a document that needs to be done. The national assessor, do you know what the national assessor do with this uh, document, the summary statement? Yes, no, just do that, that on it, like that? No, yes, no, no. Yeah, it's really, no. yeah, the, yeah, Jale, the, the national assessor will look at, for example, PE 1.4, uh, discernment of knowledge development and research directions within the engineering discipline. So very clear, you know, you read that and you understand 100% what you need to put, obviously. Uh, don't you? You read that and really easy. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> because you read that statement, discernment of knowledge, development and research directions within the engineering discipline. And then you think to yourself, what the hell? Uh, hi, welcome, Sue. Yeah, how are you? Uh, so you, you read that statement and then you think... Uh, yeah, no, I just got here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so you read that statement and then you think... How am I going to, because I've got, you've got your career episode, you've got your report, and then you will have to match which paragraph in your career episode you are addressing that particular competency. Because the national assessor will look at that competency, P1.4, and then you will put here in the column, let's say, paragraph number, career episode number two, paragraph number seven, so 2.7. He or she will read that paragraph and then will read the competency and then they say, oh yeah, yeah, I think it, the candidate is addressing that competency. But if you don't know how to do it, you may not be addressing that competency. And if you don't address if you don't match the competency, the national assessor will just cross out, bang, that's it. So that's a competency that you don't have and then you fail. So that is usually the most difficult. I've got, uh, as I said before, I've got one uh, class going on uh, with a few students already uh, learning how to do this. And this is the difficult part that engineers they have to, to address the, the, the competency. So, but uh, needs to be done. And in my training, I usually suggest people to do in this column to have, and I teach them how, how to do it, how to have several paragraphs to demonstrate one particular competency because if you have three or four or five paragraphs addressing one competency, uh, you have more chances to make sure that the national assessor will be happy with what you've written in terms of addressing those competencies. Uh, we've got people that they are production engineers yeah, uh, here online today. And I've got a very good friend that he's a production engineer. And he told me one day that uh, usually in maintenance, if you have one, you have nothing. Because in maintenance, usually if you have just one spare part, for example, uh, if that spare part breaks, then you don't have anything. So here's the same. When you are addressing the competencies here in this third column, you gotta make sure that you have more than one paragraph addressing that competency. Because if you just have one paragraph, if the national assessor is not happy with that paragraph, he or she will cross that out 
and you're not addressing that competency. And then if you didn't address one competency, they reject your application. So what I teach my students is that uh, even myself, when I did my, my summary statement, I had three, four, five, six paragraphs talking about each competency. Because if the national assessor is not happy with one, he can cross it out, but he will be happy with others. So we gotta have lots of paragraphs addressing the, the competencies. Uh, Sue, are you a Brazilian? Yes. Okay. Are you in Australia? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are you? I'm in Sydney. In Sydney. All right. Yeah. We've got uh, we've got Gerson in Sydney as well. Uh, we've got Charlay in Brisbane. Uh, we've got Edimundo in Brazil, and we've got Bibim. Uh, I forgot to ask Bibim where where are you? Uh, uh, so Bibim is replying chat. Uh, uh, Bibim is in Perth, uh, WA. Nice, very far away from here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so what I wanted to just a second, guys. Stop sharing. Uh, you guys, you guys have any question so far? If you have question, you can ask question uh, on the microphone. You can type in uh, the questions. Because usually what people have more questions, one is about uh, CPD. And I'll repeat again, CPD, Continuing Professional Development. Uh, the CPD is usually uh, events that you did after you graduated. So a lot of people ask, oh, Jerry, so yeah, when I was studying, I did a, a course about this, this and that, for example. Can I use that now? If you've done the training uh, before graduation, you cannot use in your CPD. It's got to be after graduation. Oh, what about the period? If I have uh, different types of uh, like training or work at the same time, I can use that even at the same time? After you graduated? After graduated. Yes. So it's dependent. I don't need to be in different time of period. I can use both uh, as the same time of period. Yes. For example, I work for a company at the same time I did my post graduation. For example. Of course, you. Of course, you can, Jerson. For example, okay. if you work in a company, and then you can actually use your CPD. Uh, let's say that you did an extension course, a specialization course, etc. Yeah. You can use that. And while you work in the company, for example, you were studying at night, let's say, doing yeah. the, your post-graduation, you study at night in one particular day. And then, in that, and then during the day, you did a training in company. Okay. Let's say uh, a training about something related to your work, or you had a technical meeting, or you had a review of a, a methodology or whatever you can actually use that event on the same day that you did the other training because the other training you did at night and, yeah. and that particular event you did during the day. All right. So you can actually do it. Uh, there's no problem. So all the CPD, and CPD, you don't need to send copies of the certificate. Engineers Australia, actually, they don't ask you to send copies of the certificates. So they trust that uh, if you tell them that you did this training or this event, they trust that uh, that you did it. But what do you think? If I have all that certificate, it's better than I send together? Uh, you don't need to. They actually ask... They, they okay, so they actually ask, to translate. Yeah, they actually ask you not to send. Oh, okay, perfect. 
Yeah, I believe in the, it's in the booklet here. They say, uh, they say here, it is not necessary to include certificates from each course. So at this stage, as, as I said, Engineers Australia is worried about uh, how you kind of uh, develop yourself. So, so you don't need to send like um, a certificate of master or po another postgraduate, something like this? Well, if you have a master degree, and if you have the certificate for that, uh, I strongly encourage you to send. If you have certificates of uh, extension courses because then it falls within the uh, academic documentation. You can actually put in the, in the CPD as well, but I would include those certificates in the academic documentation stage. Okay. Yeah. But you know, you, if, if, if you did a training course, let's say, uh, how to use period, Microsoft like, uh, Project, yeah, a okay. very simple course, etc. you can actually put that you did a project management to training course, but you don't need to send the certificate. So, because it's not really tertiary or it's not academic. But yeah. If you did a master's, if you did a PhD, if you did an extension course, a specialization course, uh, I certainly would include in the academic documentation. Okay. Okay, uh, cool. Thanks. Uh, for example, I did uh, a participate of a program in Brazil, that's a government one. Then they make some training for uh, micro electronic things for uh, people. So that was like two years, one year of training, and then after is uh, work in a company. Yep. For one more year. That should be included in the academic one because it was a training of uh, one year and after just the experience in a company for more one year. Yeah, I would include that one there as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, so, what, so what I was mentioned before was that um, a lot of people asked me to provide consultancy and I said, no, I, I'm not doing that. So what I created was uh, an online product. It's called uh, Step by Step for the Validation. In Portuguese, okay. I call Passo a Passo para Validação. Yeah. And uh, a lot of those uh, overseas engineers, they were asking me as well. Uh, one, because it's just a fraction of the cost of what a consultant would, uh, would ask. Uh, in our WhatsApp group, they were saying that migration agencies or migration lawyers, they charge you like four or five thousand dollars to do to provide you some consultancy and some assistance to to write a cdi and i said oh that's a lot of money uh, i was going to quit my job and just help people to do that because uh, i can make a lot of money it's a but, great idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh what i decided to do then because um i really want to help people to especially engineers to be able to recognize uh, their qualification and not spending a lot of money and do it really, really quickly. So I decided to kind of create this step-by-step -step to validate their qualification, which is an online course. Uh, but people was asking me, so now is the time that uh, we will know how much it's going to cost, how much the investment is needed. And I say, yes, no. Not now, <laughs> not now. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, for example, my students, I've got seven students doing the first class uh, that's in Portuguese. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do the, the second class in Portuguese because I'm a bit busy now, uh, but uh, I gave to them, apart from the, the three classes for them to prepare the CDR, I gave them four extra bonuses. I created a VIP group in Telegram because WhatsApp I'm going to deactivate. I don't know if you guys are members of my WhatsApp group, but it's full. I've got 256 people in the WhatsApp group and WhatsApp got a limit of 256 people. Cannot have more than that. So I created a group, a similar group in Telegram, which can have 200,000 people in one group. 
So uh, I'm going to migrate everybody to Telegram, but I created a, a very a VIP group in Telegram where I have just my seven students and I give them uh, mentorship. I don't review uh, reports, but I give feedback, they ask questions and they have access 24 seven to me. And also I'm giving them three other bonuses uh, about uh, getting a job here in Australia because my experience in interviews and recruitment, I've recruited already dozens of engineers, dozens of project managers. So I'm going to give as a bonus as well, how to prepare a curriculum, a CV, a resume that's really strong. Another bonus is, uh, well, there are seven tips or seven hints to prepare the, the CV. Another bonus is about uh, uh, seven tips to prepare a cover letter. Candidates usually they send very bad cover letters. And when we as a recruiter, we get CVs and cover letters, depends what's written in the cover letter, it goes to the POW to be interviewed or goes to the POW that goes to the rubbish because Sometimes you get 70, 100 applications. And uh, if the quality is not good, you don't waste time. You just send to the rubbish. And also, and the, and the last bonus is about seven tips how to behave in interviews. Because uh, a lot of people, they have a lot of potential, but they don't know how to behave, how to respond in interviews. So all, 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 all of those, those benefits, first, I really, really believe that uh, if you follow the step-by-step -step to validate your qualification, you have really, really strong chances to have your qualification recognized by Engineers Australia. And as I said before, you know, migration agents, agents and consultants, they will charge you between $2,000, $4,000. Somebody in our WhatsApp group said that uh, she asked for a quote and migration, together with the migration application, was charging her $13,000. Uh, so I said, no, that's way too expensive. But migration agents, they know that, all right, yeah, I'll charge you expensive because if you get a job as an engineer, you will be earning 60, 50, 60, 70,000, $100,000 a year for many, many years. So uh, it's worth all you paying $5,000 now because you can earn a lot of money later on. But even so people, some people, they, some people have that money or the people they, they don't have money. Uh, so what I decided to do, I decided to make really a very good condition because I want, a lot of engineers to, to be recognized. We need engineers here, and especially overseas engineers, we work really, really hard. And industry needs uh, a lot of uh, Brazilian engineers working here, you know, and other engineers, Filipinos and Indian engineers. Uh, so what I did, I, I put the price of my online training for just $597. So three, three classes, usually, well, today the class went for three and a half hours. And two weeks ago, I had the first class, went for four hours. And I really, really explained step by step what needs to be done. And next Saturday, I have the last class uh, to explain about the summary statement and the last four competencies is going to be running for another three, three or four hours as well. So it's really a great opportunity to start now your journey because my aim is not to make money because you know, um, $600, yeah, $600. I saw people in Facebook, they charge $90 to write you a CV and a cover letter. $50 for a CV and $40 for a cover letter, $90. I'm going to give it for free the cover letter, the CV, and also tips for, for interviews. And so it's really, really, uh, I don't believe it's a lot of money, but, but because it's, uh, it's kind of uh, just in the beginning, 
I'm doing really another very good condition. Uh, as I did for the Portuguese classes, for the first 20 students of this first class, I decided to do something really, really much, much better. It's a win-win strategy. You help me to develop my product and I'll help you with a really, really good price. Uh, for the first 20, I'm just going to charge $247, which is the price that I charged uh, my seven students of the first class, but in Portuguese. If I get just Portuguese students from uh, Brazilian students from today, for example, then I'll probably do a, a, a Portuguese class Portuguese. in Portuguese. I don't need to do in English. Uh, I like it in English. We can train our English. Yeah, that's what I think. Pretty good. That's what I think because, you know, uh, and even today, half of the class was in English because when I was talking about the competencies, when I was talking about examples, of work experience that they had. I was talking in English and I was giving English example because when you have to write, you have to write in English and you have to use technical terminologies. Uh, the wording needs to be really uh, adapted to the Australian way of English. So I decided that for the first 20, I'll open and I'll, I'll drop the price to $247 just for the first 20 students. So on my website, uh, I'll share here. Uh, where's the, my website? Uh, where's my website here? Oh, I have a, a question, Jefferson. Yep. Are you a, a civil engineer, electrical engineer? I forgot it. I'm a civil engineer. Oh, so do I. <laughs> oh, you are so lucky you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. But uh, interesting that uh, my students, uh, we've got uh, production engineers, we've got uh, electrical engineer, we've got civil engineer, we've got a mechanical engineer. And uh, to prepare the class, when I give examples to them, I give examples covering a lot of different areas because it's not just good enough just to give examples of civil engineering, but I give examples of other types of engineering as well. Yeah, that's all right. Um, my master, it was in project management. So right. we had like a, a, a lot of engineers <laughs> like taste to uh, chemical and whatever. Yes. So it's good. Yes, yeah, certainly diversity is, is really good. And uh, so, I'll, and I do my research as well because oh, also when Engineers Australia, when they do the assessment, uh, we've got some, I think there are some 20, 25 types of engineers. Uh, you can see the, 25, uh, about 25 engineers here. And Engineers Australia, they don't really have uh, all sort of engineers to do assessment. So they don't, they, they don't really have naval uh, engineer to do assessment just for those engineers that they do naval engineer. So they, use, they probably have uh, a civil engineer doing assessment of naval engineers or petroleum engineers, etc., because they not really dive into much of the technical stuff. They just want to make sure that you address the competencies. And that's what I teach in my, in my training. So on my website, uh, here in the engineers Australia, engineersinaustralia.com, I've got this uh, step-by-step -step validation. And here I explain what the training is. So it's a special offer for the first 20 students from 900, uh, sorry, 597 to just 247, plus the four exclusive bonus and the bonus are the, are the, the VIP group where uh, students can exchange information 
and students can have my mentorship for 15 days. Uh, I put 15 days here, but for my first class, for example, I extended to 30 days. I gave them another 15 days of mentorship. Uh, then also to how seven hints to prepare the curriculum, seven hints to prepare a cover letter, and seven hints for stronger interviews. Uh, another question. <laughs> yes, yes, Sue. You're Do right. you think that uh, in 15 days we are able to write everything? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Sue. If I was to write today, I would be writing in seven days. Uh, because now I know. I know what needs to be done. I know the competencies. I know how to address competencies. Uh, but, you know, uh, as I said, I've extended my mentorship in this first class for 30 days. And I'm happy to extend, you know, uh, for this group as well. Uh, give 30 days, even more, you know. Because for me, uh, my interest is that uh, you guys succeed and i'm just not going to review uh reports because i don't have time i work full time and uh, i do this just in my spare time so last night i was until 2 a.m in the morning preparing for the class and and for this webinar today uh, and i've got a wife and a daughter so they are very demanding so <laughs> Uh, I just don't have the time to do to 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 review uh, reports. Uh, takes a lot of time and certainly uh, costs a lot of money. Uh, if I have to spend, you know, 10, 15, 20 hours to review reports and provide feedback. Uh, Jason. Opa, Charlie. Yeah. I, <laughs> I've written a question on the chat. Ah, did you? All yeah. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm interested in trabalho too. Should I mention that? Although my main application is just engineer and I don't have any work experience in WHS jobs. Well, say, uh, did, uh, did you do your, your train, your qualification after you graduate as industrial engineer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah all right, okay. So if you graduated uh, workplace health and safety engineer or safety engineer after you graduate as industrial engineer, you certainly can include uh, that in your CPD. And, uh, and you can include that certificate in your academic documentation as well. Okay. That's not a problem. Yeah, but even, if, even though if you don't have any work experience. Yeah, but I, I can't write any career episodes about that. Because my main application will be about industrial engineer. Yeah, and, and that's a very good question because uh, Engineers Australia, they say that uh, if you have a lot of the people, they have two majors. For example, in your case, you've got uh, safety engineering and industrial engineering. Uh, you can just apply for one. So you actually got to choose which one do you believe uh, you have better chances not just to be recognized as well as uh, migration chances. Because sometimes- Industrial engineer for sure. <laughs> yeah, industrial engineer. So if industrial engineer, in terms of your chances to be recognized, uh, industrial engineer, better chances to be uh, successful in a migration application, then, well, that's a, then a no brainer. Uh, you, when you apply, you select industrial engineer, and then you can use those, uh, the academic experience as well as your work experience uh, to recognize your profession as industrial engineer. Thank you. Yeah, that's not a problem. But certainly you can use that, uh, that uh, uh, academic documents. Yeah, the, 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 the safety is. Uh, academic documents as well as the CPD. Thank you. Yeah. We've got uh, somebody new here. Uh, Haider, uh, do you hear us, Haider? 
can type in a message or unmute the microphone. No? Yeah. Any other particular question or I've got the chat open here? Just one question. It's about uh, the level of the student then you start the seven ones. They start uh, from the zero or they sh already start to create all the CDR and the documents and just was more like a mentor than really start from the beginning for everyone. What is the level of the students started? Well, everyone starts from the scratch. Uh, the scratch. Uh, yeah, well, okay. I've got uh, probably one that she's more advanced. Uh, okay. She's actually doing, I think, the English test next week. Okay. So she wants to, re and she's working really, really hard, and she wants to finish the CDR in uh, two weeks' time. Yeah. In two weeks' time. So she's more advanced. Uh, but everybody gets the same information. I start from scratch, explaining the process, uh, explaining step by step how you put together the CPD, uh, how you fill out the CPD table. Um, I explain each career episode because we've got an introduction, background, uh, your personal activity of engineering, and uh, the summary when you are writing your career episode. Yeah. And each of those paragraphs, uh, sorry, each one of those sections, you've got to write determined things, certain things in those, uh, in those sections. And in the class, I explain step by step, you know, in the introduction here, you're going to write about this. Uh, you've got to make sure that uh, you include uh, professional engineering terminology and I give some examples of professional engineering technologies because a lot of uh, the mistakes that people they do uh, I've seen a lot of people that they have a lot of experience but when because we engineers we're not really good at writing we're good at doing we're good at uh, calculating analyzing etc solving problems solving I, problem. <laughs> I know because I am like that as well and that's what I took. I took six months to write my episodes because I just couldn't write properly. Uh, but I had time and I wasn't in a hurry to do it. But some people are. This student, she's in a hurry. She's doing the English test now and she wants to, 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 to send her application in the next month. Yeah, you take the exam in August. In August. So it would be really great, imagine Sue, you take your exam in August, which is in just a few weeks time. Wouldn't it really be great if you, when you get the results of your PTE, TOEFL, IELTS, whatever, if you have your CDR ready to submit? Yeah, uh, it was. Uh, when I saw your email, uh, oh, it was 8, 8, 8, 8 p.m., but I will enter. <laughs> No, 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 that's okay. I actually, I've got a video that I, that I recorded when I did this very same webinar, but I did it in Portuguese. I recorded another video with the same information in Portuguese. I can send you guys the link uh, so you can actually watch uh, the video in, in Portuguese. Exactly the same that I explained here, but certainly more concise, it's just 20 minutes. Uh, which got pretty much the same information here. So, but you know, uh, that's what I, my aim is to teach people. Uh, I want to guide you step by step so you guys can do it quickly and, uh, and just kind of get recognized. It's for everyone watch. Oh no, it's just for you, like. No, no, it's public. Yeah, yeah. So do you have a channel? Yes, I do. Uh, if you, I'll just, I'm just going to put my link in the chat so you guys can, where is that? Uh, yeah, I became a YouTuber now. <laughs> uh, my daughter, she, she jokes with me. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, where is that? Uh, my videos. I found you. Uh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's called. Uh, uh, Caminhos da validação do diploma. Uh, not that one there. Uh, it's actually, I think, in English. Great offer of the step by step to validate. Uh, yeah, it's got like a my picture in like a a picture of an approved diploma. Uh, I found it here. I'll just um, uh, copy the link. Yeah, my internet's a bit um, a bit slow. Uh, copy. All right, and now. Are you guys hearing? <laughs> yeah. 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 Because when I did my webinar, I had uh, I was using a different platform, and I had serious problem with that particular platform, and I didn't really. And there are heaps more videos there. There's videos about pretty much anything about um, whatever you want to, to find about yeah. validation. It's got, uh, I've got some podcasts. The podcasts are good. They kind of are very short. They like just two minutes. I know that uh, sometimes when I have a video, five, 10, 15 minutes, a bit, bit boring. But uh, yeah, those podcasts, uh, I try to make uh, almost daily daily podcasts yeah so are you doing portuguese or in english i'm actually podcasts i'm doing both i'm doing english and portuguese uh, but my videos majority of them i think all of them they are in portuguese because as well, as I said I, I, in the beginning, the, the idea was to just kind of share information and I ended <laughs> up getting a lot of uh, requests from uh, overseas engineers. And uh, it's a lot, it's time consuming because um, even my website, I started to translate in English. It's not everything that I've got in English, but uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, so any other particular question? And are you all subscribed? Yeah, are you all subscribed to my to my website? Yeah. Yeah. So you get my my emails often? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you get uh, Sue, do you, do you get my emails? You're not subscribed? I don't know. <laughs> have you read my, have, have you guys read my ebook? I wrote an ebook. Oh, I got it. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. So yeah. if you got it, you, you are subscribed to, to my, to my website. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to write another ebook uh, when I have time which is about the, I think, seven mistakes engineers they make when they are doing the recognition pathway, because there's a lot of mistakes that I see and uh, I'll probably write an ebook and I'll send it to you guys as well. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, if you guys don't really have more questions, uh, yeah, if, if, if you want to know more about the step-by-step -step, and if I ended up making a class just with Brazilians, I'll probably run a class in Portuguese, uh, but uh, I'm going to send this link with the step-by-step -step to my listing and uh, I might have overseas engineers. So I have to run this class probably in English. Uh, if you want in Portuguese, you've got to wait. Uh, if you want in English, then yeah, uh, you're more than welcome to, to attend as well. 
and assumation perhaps in English is a good idea because you can practice your English, uh, especially those ones that they have difficulties in listening. Obviously, my English is not uh, the best in the world. I'm not a native English speaker, but uh, I'll try my best to uh, to make a good effort to have a very good English speaking with you guys. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other particular question? So you probably miss out uh, some of the content in the beginning, but uh, if you if you watch that particular video and this one as well, I will be editing and uh, I will make available in my YouTube channel as well. So you can actually then watch. I need to spend so some time just to I edit. I just have yeah. a question. When you will start the new, the new one? The new group? The class. <laughs> yeah, the new class. Well, uh, yeah, this, I usually op uh, keep open the offer just for one week. So Saturday next week, I'll be closing the, that offer. And then I had already a few people in the waiting list because they ended up they wanting to, to be part of the first class, but because I closed, they are on the waiting list for the next class. In Portuguese, I don't know when I'll be having the, the next class, but this one, uh, I will be closing the offer next Saturday, which is the 20th. And probably the first class will be on, Saturday, probably, I'll oh, just... Please don't 26. 27. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, the 20th is when I'll be closing. Uh, yeah, probably will be the 27th the first class, probably 27th. And then what I did with this first group in Portuguese, I closed the offer the 22nd of June. And then the first class was on the 29th of June. And then between the first and the second class, I gave a break of two weeks uh, because I ended up giving them another bonus while in the class. And uh, they had two weeks to do a little bit of a homework and today I had a second class and next Saturday I've got the last class with them. Uh, I'm just asking because I I imagine that the, the, the new class I uh, started in 27 but it's because I'm not here. <laughs> Are you not here? All right uh, okay yeah so you traveling back to Brazil or whatever, but I feel no, not... no, it's just the weekend. Ah, the weekend. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I had one person that missed out the first class. Uh, what I do, uh, and I didn't mention that, uh, for the students, when you go to my website, there is a special area there for, uh, students. So, it's a student's exclusive area. And I actually record the, 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 the classes and I leave the copy of the class in the student area, as well as the copy of my presentations as well in the PowerPoint presentation. I recorded a video and I leave it there for your reference as well. So I had a student that he was in Italy, a Brazilian engineer, he was in Italy and just that weekend, uh, he was traveling back to Brazil. So he missed out the, the class, but he, he can access the student area and then he can view uh, the class as many and times. And also, as yeah. okay. And if I have like a question or, and can I send a mail or something like this? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, one. Uh, we'll have that uh, VIP group with the, just with the students where you can send uh, questions. Uh, for example, two weeks ago, I asked them, 
Do you have an idea of the career episodes that you're going to start writing? If you have an idea of the three career episodes, send me an email. I'll read it. And then I gave them a call. I spent 15, 20 minutes on the phone with them, providing them feedback if they are on the right track, if they're not in the right track, if they should change or not. Uh, you know, for me, it doesn't really, I know that's time and this and that, etc. But as, as I said, uh, my objective, if my objective was to make money, I was going to accept all the consultancy requests because I had 20, 20 requests. And if I charge $3,000, I could be making $60,000 just in consultancy. I could ask my job, I need uh, 30 days leave and make $60,000 in one month. But it's not my objective. My objective is because I don't think it, you should be paying $3,000 for somebody to assist you. Uh, uh, I had a friend, uh, he paid, but not like this this amount of money and the lawyer just said no it's not correct you have it to redo it so, yeah redo it. yeah obviously and and this money that people pay fifteen hundred two thousand dollars three thousand it's not for them to write the lawyers and migrations they just tell you what you need to what need to write you still you pay a lot of money and you still have to write it so yeah. it's it's really really i think oh for me is abusive so but it's time because if you have to review reports and this and that it takes time and time is money so if you're spending 15 20 hours uh, reviewing and this and that etc uh, it will cost a lot of money but uh, my methodology is about as i as we say in brazil uh, I'm teaching students to fish. I'm not giving them the fish. I'm teaching them how to fish. So you can write, but you can write in the right way. Uh, in today's class, I explain about 10 competencies. And I gave a lot of examples of what, uh, if they've done that, they should write in uh, with those terminologies. So, and the feedback was, oh, Jerson, yeah, thanks for giving us that clarity. Because one thing is when you write 2,000 words in one career episode, and then when you come to the summary statement, you, you find out that uh, what you've written is not really correct because you cannot match with the competencies. And then you've got to rewrite everything. And that's what probably happened with your friend, Sue, that the lawyer said, now you're going to rewrite it because it's not good enough. Uh, and then you spend time and we don't have time, you know. When I was a student and while I was doing my CDR, you know, I was, you miss out that uh, part, Sue, but I was working as a cleaner and kitchen hand and, and et cetera as well. And I was working and I was also studying. I was studying during the day and working at night. So didn't really have time to, to write career episodes. So I wish I, I could have some sort of uh, help as well because when I write, I write the right thing and I do it right in the first time. I don't really have to re rework and redo it and redo it. So. Thanks. <laughs> no, that's all right. All right. Uh, I'll probably be sending you guys, uh, I'll be sending uh, emails to my listing uh, about uh, about this offer so have a think about it if you have questions uh, before purchasing uh, send me an email or if you are in the in the telegram group uh, send me a message and I'll reply how can as I well. join, how can I join the telegram group uh, okay. Uh, yeah, send the Telegram group link. So you probably need to access, uh, send to your mobile. You probably need to download the Telegram app first. I have. Yeah. So if you if you connect there, uh, we are probably about uh, I think sixty or seventy. 
in the Telegram group. Uh, I'm going to actually deactivate the WhatsApp groups. Any other questions, Gerson, Jarley? No. All good? All good. Edmundo, all good? And Haider? Uh, I don't know if Haider is... All good. All good, Jarley, good. Uh, all right then, uh, we'll be editing this video hopefully sometime, maybe tomorrow or this week, and I'll be uploading to my YouTube channel, and then I'll be sending to you guys. All good, Edmundo, do you have any questions? <laughs> no, no question. No question, all right, good. No, in the moment, no question. That's all right, okay. if, you, if you have questions, just fire the question away. Okay. <laughs> All right then. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Thank you. See ya. Bye Have bye. a nice night. Bye. You too. Have a good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.